Okay, people, we're going to talk about the um, fundamentals of primary keys and foreign keys. What are they? Why do we use them? Well, regardless of whether you're using Microsoft Access, MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, what I've got in front of us, the principles are exactly the same. Um, it's all about how do I reference one table to another without it all going completely haywire. And so for us to do this, we need to ensure that we set up our information in a unique um, structure. And this is where the primary key comes in. Now, let's take a very basic example of the customers table and the orders table. Now, if I go into the design of customers. So those of you using Access can play along using the Northwind database. Those of you in SQL Server, you can play along um, in the Northwind database that you can get from Microsoft's website. Um, the rest of you, I'm afraid you'll just have to follow what's on screen, I'm afraid. But if you have any questions or comments, please come to pcteach.me and I'll happily try and answer them for you. So what we've got in here is I've gone into the design of the customers table and you'll see that I've got a list of all of my different fields in here. And you'll notice the top one, the customer ID, has a key next to it and also it is not allowing nulls. Um, absolutely, the customer ID must be um, a field that you cannot allow gaps in whatsoever. So the primary key, that's the first important thing. The other thing is up here I can click on to the manage indexes and keys. Um, it's a little bit more simplified in access because it's a lesser product I'm afraid to say. But in there somewhere you should be able to get to your index and you should see the one which indicates it's the primary key. And you'll notice that it will actually say in here that it is um, the primary key. That's the type it is. It also is an index. It's, it's important. That will be another video as well. Um, but for this time, we're just talking about keys. Um, this is the primary key. And um, generally, it will be clustered as well. Um, so you should never need to touch inside here because simply put, all you have to do is click on this icon here to either remove a key. It's going to warn me, do you want to do that? I'm going to say no because it's going to ruin the rest of the demo. Um, but you could just easily go into a table and say, that's my primary key. Click on it. As long as it's unique, it will be accepted. Now, the other thing, though, is that we have foreign keys. So if a primary key indicates uniqueness in a table, which indicates the one side of the one to many relationship, what the hell is a foreign key? Well, let's look at it from a different perspective. This is purely SQL Server's um, option only. But in the right, um, if I right click on customers, I have a view dependencies option. Now, what this does is it brings up a dialog box which just shows you all the things that depend on this table. And one of the things it should do is it will indicate that orders is. Um, a dependency on that. And then we can then say, well, what's dependent on orders? And we can keep drilling through. So if you follow it, if you've been following all the other videos that I provided in this series, um, which you can get from pcteach.me, you'll notice that these are the tables I've been referencing in all the SQL um, examples I've been doing so far. Customers, order details, um, and away we go. Even products should be in here as well somewhere. Um, so with that discussed, how do we create a foreign key? Well, let's have a look at the orders um, table. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to close down the customers table. And over in the orders, I'm going to right click and go into design of that. And let's just see how this looks. So there we go. As you can see, the orders table has a unique identifier, the order ID. Treat that like the invoice number and we're not far from the truth. So yeah, the invoice number should be unique. The order details won't be unique on the order ID, but it will have its own unique um, um, primary key in that regard. Now, what we're going to do, though, is we're just going to have a look over here. And what else have we got? Well, you notice I've got this option called relationship. So if I click on that, and it brings up the screen and you'll see they've all got FK on it, foreign key. So let's have a look. There's one there, FK orders to customers. And what that's telling me is it's um, got a name of FK orders customers. And up here it says table and column specifications. If I expand that, it shows it all grayed out. Let me just bring it up as a dialog box. And you'll see that the primary key table is the customers, and then we indicate what the field is. And then the foreign key table indicates its orders, which is the one we're in. We can't change that. And what field we're referring to, which is the customer ID. 
Now, hopefully this should start be put into place because now we have put that in. Soon as that information is stored, we have now got what's known as referential integrity. Now, what that means is, is if I try to create in the orders table a um, new order where the um, customer ID does not exist, it won't let me put them in. So the customer is now in charge of the orders table in the same way as the order details is um, being looked after by the orders table so that there's a, like a nice little bit of hierarchy, a pecking order, if you will, of how all of the logic gets put together. And it's all known as referential integrity. Now, how do we see that? We, we could see it in dialog boxes, great, but it would be great if we could see a diagram of it. Well, guess what? Access, Microsoft SQL Server, they have options to show it graphically. And this is done in SQL with the database diagrams option. Those of you in Access, all being well on your toolbar, you should see an icon with some boxes with lines connecting them together and it should say um, relationships. Now, if you click on that, you'll go to a screen very, very similar to what I'm about to go to here. So in the new database diagram that I've just done, which I did by right clicking, it should ask you to add table. Those of you in access, you probably find it's already brought up the screen. So if you hold fire, you'll, you'll catch up with us in a moment. What I'm interested in is I want to look at the customers and then the order. So I'm going to hold down the control key, click on customers, now click on orders and choose add. Now what happens is behind the scenes, you should see it all populating. And now I'm going to click on close. Now watch what will happen. What it will do is it will immediately show you the links between them. And if you hover over, look at that. It should be now saying in the tooltip, FK orders to customers. Now, I'm just going to move the box by dragging it over to the side so I can see it. There's our key. And there's this sort of link, this little chain thing, which actually indicates the symbol of infinity. So what that's telling you is it's one to many. Now let's add some more in. Let's add um, another table and let's have a look at, well, what comes from orders? Well, I already said the order details comes in. I know also that products comes in. So let's add those two and see how this all fits together now. So I'll add them and wait for it. Now close. Doesn't really do anything in regards to the layout. What you can do is right click and you should have an option to say arrange tables. I don't quite like doing that because quite often it really makes a mess of what you've done, um, but each to their own. Um, what you can do is you can zoom in and out. This can be done either at the top here or control and mouse wheel. That's the way I normally do things. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to try and keep it la um, quite large. But you'll notice now we have customer one, too many, two orders. One order, as you can see there, it says the... Um, the FK order details order um, is between the orders and the order details. And then that goes across here to the order ID. And then we've got one product going to the order details. Now, there is a method in my madness to finish off on primary and foreign keys. You may suddenly start getting a bit cross-eyed when you look at the order details table. Hang on, we've got two keys there. Why is this? Is this a bug? Is this a problem? Absolutely not. It is a very, very valid reason why you would want them. Sometimes a table, a field on its own, is not enough to define uniqueness. However, two fields can define uniqueness. Now, let me give you a really good practical example of where the Northwind table um, or the orders table comes in here. Right, I place an order with a stationary company and I order um, 10 reams of um, A4 paper. I then order 20,000 paper clips on the same invoice. I then order 10 blue pens. I then order another 10 blue pens. But hang on, why don't I just order 20 blue pens? Well, the purpose is that the order ID on its own doesn't define uniqueness, but defining it with the product ID, it would. So if I put in 10 blue pens, and that was the product ID of 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I try to add in another lot of blue pens, with the product ID of yet again, one, two, three, four, it would say, hang on a minute, order number one cannot have product ID one, two, three, four twice in the database. So it stops you from doing it. And between those two defines uniqueness. And this in the trade is known as a many to many because you have one order can have many order details. And at the same time, one product 
can be in many order details. And that's how you define generally a many-to-many -many relationship. It's when you join a table where on one side it would be unique, but on the other side it would be unique. And the only way to define uniqueness across individual records would be to define it by a dual triple, quadruple, quintuple, um, making up words now. There's so many different amounts of primary keys you can define to do it. So don't think a primary key is one field because in actual fact it could be many. So hopefully this will give you an insight into why you need a primary key and a foreign key. It defines referential integrity and ensures uniqueness across all of your tables. Hope this has been of use.